Probably the single most valuable power source in America is the turbine generator. With a great hum, the power maker consumes its fuel, running continuously 24 hours a day, sometimes for years without stopping. However great its size, ruggedness, or power output, this is a precision instrument manufactured with craftsmanship equal to that of a fine watch. Perhaps the progress in the manufacture of America's power makers is measured in efficiency in megawatts, or precisely balanced wheels, highly polished vanes, thousands of pounds of copper and tons of steel. Or perhaps progress is measured in skilled people and the places they work, where the highest quality standards prevail in industry today. The development of America's electric power is the story of people, of places, and most of all, of progress. Of progress that has helped make us the most envied nation in the world. As the leader, we cannot afford to be complacent, but we can take justifiable pride in the well-known facts. Let's take a brief look at the statistics. Production of electric energy in the United States continues to grow more than twice as fast as the economy as a whole. Our power producing capability continues to stay well ahead of demand. Although the cost of almost everything else Americans buy has gone up sharply in the last 50 years, the average cost of electric service to our homes has remained about constant. We have more electricity than the next five nations of the world combined, and three times as much as Russia has. Although the Soviet Union has made rapid progress, we enjoy nearly eight times as much electricity in our homes as the Russians do. And our transmission system is five times the size of Russia's even though the Soviet Union has about three times the geographical area to cover as we have. Let's take a closer look at American progress in the generation and transmission of electric power. At Schenectady, New York, the world's leading turbine generator factory contains an investment in new facilities greater than the original cost of the building. Sophisticated machine tools meet the increasingly exacting specifications of a technology that has evolved beyond the point of dramatic breakthroughs. For example, a facility for balancing rotors at overspeeds. Tape-controlled millers machine turbine bucket contours that could not be turned out by older, less precise equipment. Reliability is guarded by advanced quality control equipment. Today's GE turbine generator goes through more than 50,000 quality control checks. American industrial technology is continuing to make significant advances in manufacturing standards. This full-scale low-pressure turbine makes possible the study of steam path components under actual operating conditions. Loads of 450,000 pounds can be imposed to check out new thrust bearing designs. Complementing the development laboratory, General Electric's Materials and Processes Lab is a new home for a continuing program of technological studies dating back to 1894. For example, in experimental heat treating furnaces, properties of new alloys for future turbine application are being explored. High voltage testing subjects new generator insulations to conditions well beyond what they will encounter in actual use. Extensive banks of creep and rupture furnaces perform hundreds of life tests on new materials. The goal 
to find alloys best suited to supercritical pressures and temperatures. And for the future, General Electric's research laboratory is devoted to basic research. Here the search continues for new ways of making electricity. Magnetohydrodynamics, which employs an ionized gas as the conductor in a magnetic field. Thermionic converters that turn heat directly to electricity. Fuel cells that convert chemical energy. Fusion, the search for a magnetic bottle. Out of this privately financed experimenting comes the new knowledge and new applications that lead to better power makers tomorrow. Big base load hydro and steam stations are the backbone of any nation's power generating system. Such stations in the United States are part of a complex pattern of investor, public, and cooperative ownership. And both the characteristics and problems of this complex are unique to our own highly electrified nation. Here, very large steam turbine generators like the 900,000 kilowatt unit General Electric is building for TVA generate great amounts of electric power efficiently and economically. But this country's power demands are so great, the load so varied, and the system so complex that we need a much greater variety of power generating sources than does a country just building its electric power system. Right now, for example, General Electric is producing pump storage hydroelectric units, an excellent way of serving peak loads where the terrain is suitable. General Electric developed the gas turbine package power plant for peaking, emergency standby, and end-of-line power. It features low installed cost, location flexibility, and remote unattended operation. A new 230,000 kilowatt combined cycle gas and steam plant for Oklahoma Gas and Electric is expected to offer an efficiency gain of 4 to 6 percent. Add to these types low-cost steam, spinning reserve, and atomic power plants, and America's electric power systems have a potential combination that will allow them to meet any kind of load problem efficiently and economically. The development of atomic power is a good illustration of how our nation's industry and government can work effectively together. The Vallecitos Atomic Laboratory represents the manufacturer's investment in the pursuit of a proven reactor type, in balance with the federal government's exploration of a variety of reactor types. And also here at Vallecitos, a new nuclear superheat testing facility is being built as the forerunner of a possible large-scale atomic power plant being considered by the electric utility company serving New York State. Dresden Nuclear Power Station near Chicago is only one of several atomic power plants demonstrating progress toward the goal of widespread economical nuclear electric power. Dresden can now produce more than one and one half billion kilowatt hours each year. Big Rock Nuclear Plant is a power station and a practical laboratory. Here a four and one half year research and development program is underway. In cooperation with the Atomic Energy Commission, the nation's utilities, and General Electric, such programs will search out methods to increase the power density of the reactor core, enabling more power to be generated at a lower cost. As generating stations grow larger, so do the problems of power transmission, control, and protection of the flow of electricity. At the Switchgear Development Laboratory in Philadelphia, the testing of new types of air blast circuit breakers is helping to prove the feasibility of the air blast design for applications at super voltages. A $5 million search led to a practical method of quenching high current power in a vacuum. In this test, a 9200 ampere power surge is cut off before damage can be done. To make the vacuum interrupter a practical product, General Electric scientists and engineers developed a complete new technology. Final manufacturing and assembly operations take place in a clean room, where standards of cleanliness are even higher than those of a hospital operating room. Now in production, the vacuum interrupter will soon provide improved system protection. 
through faster operation and lower maintenance costs than devices now in use. Extra high voltage transmission is another major front on which our unique American complex is developing its own solution to our unique American needs. General Electric's Four Mile Laboratory in the Berkshire Hills of Massachusetts, for instance, is designed to investigate transmission of AC power at 500 to 750 kilovolts and above. It's a seven and a half million dollar investment in the future of EHV power transmission. A future in which America's electric utilities will have invested more than eight billion dollars by 1970. Our ever increasing transmission distances favor higher voltages. If the distances become great enough and development becomes economically feasible, these conditions may favor the transmission of DC power by common carrier. The Four Mile Laboratory's 267 instruments on the line automatically relay over 10 million readings a year into the data acquisition center. This information is fed into a computer which processes it and provides guidance for analytical studies and systems planning. What is the optimum size and configuration of conductors that will satisfy radio noise limitation requirements at 500 kV? What switching surges and dynamic overvoltages may be expected with the huge box of power of the future? What will the effects of lightning stroke be? Project EHV is helping the nation's utilities achieve the optimum blend of reliability and economy in the design of their programs of system expansion and interconnection. On another front, computer techniques permit simulation of system loads and capacity to determine integrated plans for new installations. With these high-speed computers, General Electric engineers, in cooperation with system planning engineers, can plan entire utility expansion programs. This kind of total systems planning will help us to make optimum use of America's resources. And that's not all. The country's electric utilities have been working in the direction of a nationwide power grid for many years. Already some 90% of our generating capacity is part of one or more interconnected system grouping. And the completion of a nationwide high voltage transmission grid by 1970 will permit interconnected operation of all our power systems. The nation's investor-owned utilities are integrating in such ventures as the Mid-Atlantic Power Grid. Here, 18 participating utilities are linking three power systems in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. In the power distribution area, this Lumatran combination of street light and transformer is typical of progress that means not only better appearance, but real cost savings in underground distribution. This example of equipment innovation grew out of General Electric's Project Dapper, jointly sponsored with the Arizona Public Service Company, and is typical of the new look in power distribution. The nation's electrical equipment manufacturers support all these efforts, advancing the frontiers of research, of technology, and manufacturing to ever more demanding standards of excellence. of America can be measured in the growth of electric power. People, places, and progress.